What's going on guys, I'm Matt from SB Fishing TV here with Carl's Bait and Tackle. We just launched the boat and today we're going to go over the importance of following birds and bait fish to find you big bass. We're going to be using the baits that we got in our mystery tackle box and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to use them while following the birds and bait fish to catch some fish. So something that I'm doing right now, I know you guys can hear the motor, it's a little bit loud, but something I like to do is start scouting spots that I want to fish. And I'm going to roll around the spot, just slowly idling, looking at the graph for any bait balls that I can find. And I have the side imaging and the down scan on, just looking for any balls of bait. And as you can see, we have a little bit showing up here, suspended in 30 feet of water. There's actually a bit more too. So those fish are on the inside of a creek mouth, suspended in about 15 feet of water. So we're going to continue back into this creek a little bit and focus on that 15 foot range and see if we can find any more bait. And then from there we're going to start fishing some of the baits. We worked our way back into this creek and I saw enough bait as to where I want to go ahead and fish my way out of it. I also saw some bigger marks on the graph and that's exactly what you want to see. You want to take into consideration what time of year that it is to start keying in on the bait. So it's fall right now. I know the bait is going to start pushing into the backs of the creeks and you know if it were summer maybe I'd be focusing way more out on the main lake on points or deeper drop-offs in the spring. I'm going to be focusing on shallower coves and flats but you always want to take into consideration what time of year it is. At the beginning of the video I was talking about the importance of birds so that's actually like an old school fish finder. You can use the birds to your advantage to help you find the bait. They have a bird's eye view, if you will, and a lot of times you'll see these birds in the backs of creeks or out on the main lake just dive bombing into the water. And they're going after, you know, the shad or bluegill or whatever it may be that you have in your lake. But they're seeing these fish that are suspended or higher up in the water column over 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 feet, it doesn't matter. Even out in the ocean, you'll see birds dive bombing and just schooling on these fish. So you can use that to your advantage and that'll definitely help you find some bait fish. And as the old saying goes, you find the bait, you find the bass. So keep that in mind when you're out there and it's definitely gonna help you catch more fish. So before we start fishing, I wanna show you some of these baits that I got in my mystery tackle box, which we're gonna be using today and trying to catch some big old fish. So let's take a look at what we got. We're gonna start with the hard baits first. We have three that are really good for fall. First up being the Excite Baits XB5. This is a square bill crankbait, which is gonna perfectly mimic a shad. And this is for when you find the fish shallow and they're hugging tight to cover. You can bang this through rocks, you can rip it through grass, you can just pull it over top of trees and stumps and just get it through all of that really tight cover. And that's gonna cause a good reaction strike. So that's a really good square bill. Now the next two, we have a lipless crankbait from Lunker Hunt. This is the Lunker Hunt Kraken. This is gonna be a perfect search bait, just like the square bill, and that's when you wanna cover water. I'm definitely gonna start the day off throwing this and just working my way down the bank looking for these more suspended fish. And another one that's really good for catching suspended fish is the jerk bait, and this is the Hunch, which is exclusive to Catch Co. Both of these perfectly are gonna mimic the shad. And I find that this time of year we're finding three to four inch shad that are just swimming around up in these creeks trying to get more nutrients and better oxygen levels. So that's a really good time to look in the back of creeks is fall. So another really good search bait or something uh, that works really well, especially if you find these birds just dive bombing into the back of a creek or you roll up on a big school of bait is the down under underspin. And this is from Cool Baits Company and this paddle tail swim bait on the back is also theirs. It's a three inch paddle tail swim bait. It's just a finesse underspin which works so well and again if you find yourself on a school of bait and you see bass are just popping on them or you see birds dive bombing if you throw this through there it's almost a guarantee that you're going to catch fish. Now if the bite's a little bit slow or if you have found a bunch of fish stacked up in a creek and you feel like slowing down a little bit we have some plastics. So we're gonna start with the most finesse of all and that is gonna be a Nico rig. So we have a Katana hook Nico rig set and that comes with a number two Nico rig hook with the band on there which is really great with the Big Bite Baits Coontail. So this is a really cool worm to Nico rig and it's especially nice because it has all these ribs running down it. 
it's really easy to get that band in through some of these ribs and it just holds that bait perfectly where you need it. So as far as the weight that we're gonna use with the Nico rig, we're going with the Carl Stash lead nail weight. And you're just gonna push that right up into the head and then you put the band on and then you slide the hook through the band, throw it on a spinning rod, you know, eight, 10 pound test and you're good to go. That thing is definitely gonna catch you some fish. And last but not least, and some of my favorite baits to throw, we have two crawl style baits. First up being the Carl's Bait and Tackle Hoss Craw. And what I like so much about the Hoss Craw are these flanged claws on here. It gives it the perfect amount of action, a lot of kick, and it just looks really good coming through the water. You can Texas rig this, you can throw it on the back of a jig, you can Carolina rig it. There's so many different ways that you can fish these soft plastic style baits. And that brings us up last to the KVD Perfect Plastics Rodent, which is another one of my favorite baits to Texas rig or throw on the back of a jig. It has a little bit more subtle presentation than the Hoss Crawl. But it's still, again, one of my favorite baits. Just this beaver styled bait, and it's another really good one to throw on a jig or Texas rig. So now that we've gone over all these baits, we're gonna get up and work our way out of this cove and see if we can't find some fish. We're gonna keep our eyes out for any birds that start working the water and start getting on these schooling fish. And we're gonna go over when I'm gonna throw these baits and where. So let's catch them. All right guys, we're all set up and ready to start fishing and the first thing that I'm gonna pick up is the Lunker Hunt Kraken. It's a lipless crankbait as I was saying earlier, it's a half ounce, you can really work this thing quickly, especially in the fall, it's gonna help you out just covering water and trying to find fish. And something that I really like about this is it actually gives you two line ties on there. The rear line tie is gonna give the bait a little bit more action and a wider wobble, whereas the front line tie is gonna give you that tighter quicker wobble to it and less action. So I'm going with the front line tie just because it's fall, the water's a little bit chilly. I don't need anything too crazy right now. And for those of you wondering, I'm throwing this on a seven foot medium, heavy, moderate action rod, 12 pound fluorocarbon and a moderate speed gear ratio reel. But we're gonna start working our way out of this creek. We saw a bunch of bait. Hopefully we can get a couple fish to bite. When I'm throwing a lipless, especially in the fall, I'm using it to cover water quickly. I mean, I'm keeping the trolling motor on high and just constantly work my way around making as many casts as I possibly can. Um, giving it, you know, hops and pulls of the rod and just kind of twitching it trying to get that reaction strike. Seriously, just working this thing quick and that's why I use it as a search bait and that's why it works so well because you can cover water fast and you can definitely catch some big fish doing this. This is also a pretty versatile bait in the sense that you don't have to just do a straight retrieve. You can yo-yo it, you can literally just jig it back to the boat you can slow roll it on the bottom you can work it way up in the water column and almost on the surface if you hold your rod tip up high enough something else i really like to do when i'm throwing the lipless is work the bank parallel that's going to help you in the sense that if you're finding fish in a certain area or a certain depth say they're in seven feet get the boat in 10 and you make that parallel cast you're going to keep the lipless crankbait in the strike zone a lot longer than just working down the bank and making casts at the bank like this because you're only going to be in that strike zone for a few seconds whereas if you make those parallel casts the entire cast is going to be in the strike zone something else i find works really well when i'm throwing lipless crankbaits is just changing the direction if you're just giving it that straight retrieve back to the boat it's perfectly fine but just make sure that you're moving that rod around so you're changing the direction of the lipless itself. I think that helps trigger a lot of fish that are just following it or, you know, see it coming by. If they see it change directions like they're threatened, fish have more of a tendency to eat them. So we are gonna flip this hoss crawl around a little bit. I have this rigged up on a four odd EWG hook with a quarter ounce tungsten weight, 20 pound fluorocarbon and I'm throwing it on a 7.6 medium heavy rod. This is like my flip-in Texas rig setup. It's a little heavy. For where I'm fishing, it's perfect because we have a lot of wood and rock here, so you need something that's got a little backbone to it. So you can kind of horse these fish out of that nasty cover. But you can always downsize that, like a seven foot medium heavy with 15 pound fluorocarbon, but that's generally the lightest I'm gonna be throwing a Texas rig on. Here, this is what we want to see right here. See all that bait? 
It's down there right in about 15 feet. There's a couple of bigger marks around it as well, but it's the kind of stuff you want to see. So right now we're just flipping the hoss crawl around a little bit, seeing if these fish want something a little bit slower. I've kind of gotten away from the bait, so I'm actually about to move soon. It doesn't mean there's no fish in this area because they're going to use these spots as ambush points for when bait does come by just hiding in the grass and the wood. And we're also in pretty deep water, close to shallow water. There's a little ball of bait right there, actually, right out on this tree. Oh, there's some more. There's a fish. See, there we go. All right. First fish of the day coming in on the hoss crawl. And as I was saying, I kind of got away from the bait and then I realized I started seeing more right on the surface and I was pointing it out and I was saying how the fish are going to use the wood and grass and this point actually which I'm getting out on as ambush points and sure enough first fish of the day. So we fished through a really big creek with a little bit of bait in it. We came out on the main lake, fished some points and a bluff wall. Still not seeing as much bait as I'd like and something that I highly recommend you guys do is move around quite a bit. When you're trying to find bait, especially in the fall, sometimes it can be pretty hard and these fish are constantly moving around, especially this time of year. So we're gonna fire up the motor and we're gonna go to a completely different spot and use the graph and keep a lookout for birds to help us find some more bait. All right, so we just pulled up to another spot and the first thing I noticed was the seagull dive bombed over here and pulled up a small shad. Look, he's going for it again. He's looking. So besides that, we also have one of these diving black birds back that way. So there's probably a ton of shad in the mouth of this creek. So we're gonna throw the underspin around and some other baits. Oh, I mean, look at all the bait here. Look at the graph. That's a perfect example of what you want to see. So those birds are just dive bombing all around here. We're seeing a ridiculous amount of bait on the graph. This is when you want to pick up a bait and start casting around. So that's what we're going to do. So we're still noticing a lot of bait in the 15 to 20 foot range. So I'm going to try to back off a little bit and throw the down under underspin and see if I can get any bigger fish to eat. So I'm throwing this on my spinning setup. It's a seven foot medium light. I have 20 pound braid as my main line, and that's going to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Basically when I'm throwing the down under underspin, I'm just making a cast out, or I think the bait's gonna be. You wanna cast past the bait, and then count the bait down to wherever you want in the water column, and then slowly start bringing it back. Look at all this bait. You guys see all this? That's crazy, it's covering up the screen. Look, there's so much bait here. It's saying that we're in seven feet of water when we're in 15, that's how thick it is. This might be a spot for the underspin. I've thrown this lipless around a bit. They might not want it. They may want something a little bit more finesse. The hunch jerk bait might be really good as well. The water is just a little bit dingy. That's the only reason I haven't picked that up or put it on yet. I tend to throw that in cleaner water, but that's not to say they won't hit it here. I'm gonna tie that on next. A quick tip for you guys and something else I really like to do when you're fishing around this much bait is to spray a little bit of chartreuse dye on the lure that you're throwing. The reason that I think that that helps is because it helps the fish differentiate between the thousands and thousands of shad and your bait. Plus the little bit of garlic scent in there too helps. Oh, come on, come on, right here. he's right here, he's right here. Do you guys see that? Come on. I'm just gonna drop it straight down. That was so cool. I should have had him, I think I pulled it away. I almost ate that bass. Go two huge blue heron up there, circling around. That's what you wanna see. We're gonna work our way back through this creek too. I don't think that the bait is just out in the mouth. I mean, we've seen a ton, but. I'm sure there's fish all throughout this creek. I'm gonna throw the hunch on the same rod as I was throwing the lipless on. And I'm gonna work this pretty aggressively. Since the bait is moving around so much and the fish seem to be pretty active, I'm gonna make a cast out with this, reel it down into place, and then erratic jerks with the rod, just ripping it kind of quick, giving it small pauses in between.
Water's a little bit dirty for it, but I think it'll be okay. There we go. There's a fish. Woo, buddy. Trick bait. There we go. It's a fish on the hunch. Really shallow up on that point. Not bad, a little 12 incher. But look at that, we had all that bait. We got a blue heron sitting right up on the point. We saw some seagulls here. We had one of the diving black ducks. I think those are loons, I'm not 100%. But there you guys have it. That's a really good way to get out and find fish. Keeping an eye on the birds and the bait. Now let's see if we can get some big ones. There we go, first cast with the jig. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. I was just about to say, sometimes I really like to switch it up. You know, you catch one on a jerk bait, you know the fish are there, that's when you slow down with something like a jig, or you pick up the Texas rig with the hoss crawl, pick up on those extra fish. You know there must be a bunch of, oh, there's thousands and thousands of chad right here, right in front of me. I don't know if you guys can see it, they're all just sitting right here. Follow the birds, find the bait. I mean, there is a massive school of shad in front of me. I'm looking at just balls and balls, like hundreds of thousands of shad. Oh my God. I don't know if you guys can see this. That huge, that is all bait. All of that is bait. That's hundreds of thousands of shad. See if I can spook them a little. I mean, look at this graph. This is crazy. Hey, look how, look at them right here. And this bait is perfectly imitating those fish. It's the same size. And again, that's why I like to dye the tail chartreuse. So we found the bait. All right, you guys, so we found a ton of bait in this creek. I mean, a ridiculous amount of bait. Hundreds of thousands of shad back here, but we're not seeing any bass feeding on them. We're not really seeing too many big marks on the graph next to these balls of bait. So what we're gonna do is run down this bank and flip a plastic or a Nico rig. And the way that I, I can explain it to you to make sense is if you're not hungry, the fish you know, will go and feed on these huge balls of bait and then they're done. They're gonna go sit where they're comfortable. It's like you, when you're finished eating, you leave the dining room, you go sit down at your computer desk or you know, on the couch, but then say you see a starburst sitting on your desk. Yeah, you might wanna eat it. So think of that in terms of a jig. We're gonna go flip a jig through these trees and if we run across a bass that may not even be hungry, that just sees it, opportunistic feeder, maybe we'll get him to eat. All right, let's try the crankbait out a little bit. This is a perfect bank to throw a square bill. It's a nice flat running all the way out to the mouth of the creek. There's a bunch of wood, grass mixed in. There's some rock too. Should be able to pick something up, especially with all these shad in here. I'm working this square bill in a really similar manner as the lipless. I'm making a lot of 45 degree and parallel casts with the bank, trying to keep it in the strike zone as long as possible. We're fishing in seven feet of water. I believe that this crankbait goes down to about five. Here's a quick trick for you guys. Whenever you get tangled up like this, if you just tap your rod right here, there you go. Good as new. My friend Steven taught me that a while ago. It works every time. There's a fish. Small one. Little guy. Square bill though. He was right up on the bank. Popped it off a piece of wood and I felt him eat it. That's what you want. There we go. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, boys. Oh my. This, this is a really big fish. Oh, it's a cat. <laughs> of course it's a cat. Of course. Oh, thank God. That was a big old catfish on the square bill. 
All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Make sure that you take these tips on following the bait and birds to catch yourself some fish. Didn't catch any giants today, but still, we were able to find a ton of bait and catch a few. It was a really awesome day out here. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button on Carl's Bait and Tackle, and I'll see you guys on the next one.